Welcome to this simulated training video, hence why we're wearing the appropriate PPE for the environment we're in. We've already covered our scene assessment, and as you can see, the cause appears to be the patient has fallen from a significant height. So we are worried about potential neck injuries on this patient. As always, our kit is laid out to the right-hand side of the patient above the head. We've already safely removed the helmet, which is featured in a different video. We're now going to measure our adjustable collar. And again, there's another video just on collars. Um, so what I'm going to do is measure from the top of the shoulder of the patient to level with the chin, how many fingers that is. I'm going to mark that on my collar and then adjust my collar appropriately from the line down to the bottom of the plastic, lock the collar into place and then flip the chin piece over to form it, remembering I want the chin to land on the bottom. Um, again, this would always work better when I've got somebody providing manual inline stabilisation in one of our previous videos. The collar will come up to place on the chin. This will come underneath. <coughs> so we've got that in the right place. Bringing this around and holding that collar with the Velcro. Finishing off by asking the patient to poke out their tongue so that we know um, it's adequate for their airway. Because this is high mechanism, we're going to apply high flow oxygen. And the nice thing about these collars is they've got this little piece here, which is for holding the oxygen mask in place. So there's one of these on both sides, so we can just use that to hold the oxygen mask in place uh, rather than have to go around the back um, of the patient. So obviously oxygen therapy, again, is a different qualification which you must adhere to. So now we're going to look at disability and we're going to put a pelvic binder onto this patient. So within this pouch in our bag, we've got our a pelvic binder. We're going to come down to this area and not forgetting from that previous video, we're looking for the greater trochanter area. But on this scenario, we're not going to be removing clothing, but I am going to remove what I can to come out of the way. Um, so I'm using the Prometheus pelvic binder on this occasion, but as per the previous video, there are a range of uh, pelvic binders which are available to you. So we're going to prep and get the Velcro out of the way. We're then going to use the belt under the natural hollows of the knees, being very careful about uh, moving the patient. So we're going to bring that through get that centralised and this would be easier with a partner where we're going to work it up and as we said in the previous video, the closer to skin the better. But if we do have to move the patient 10 to 15 degrees, then we can do that. We've found the greater decanter, it looks like the patient may have lost bladder control as well. We're going to get that point directly over the greater trochanter there and this would be cut in a real scenario the same the other side and then we're going to pull to get that tension offset and lay that down now to finish this off we're also going to hold the feet together and for that i'm just going to get myself a triangular bandage so we're coming to my next pouch up I've got a triangular bandage here. Putting the triangular bandage into a narrow fold, coming under the natural hollows of the ankles here, coming over the top and crossing, I'm then producing a figure of eight, and because this worker is still wearing boots, I'm going to tie on the corner of the boot. Um, if this was in a different scenario, I may well 
remove footwear so I can get to pedal pulses and I can then tie the knot directly in the bottom but it does work better whilst they're wearing boots. We're now going to look at a fractured mid shaft of femur and for that we're going to be using a traction splint so again there's a number of different makes and models out there. On our simulated mannequin here, we're looking at a mid shaft of femur on his right leg. So we've already applied a pelvic binder as well as our collar and oxygen on the patient. For this, we would always want to be down to bare skin so that we can feel for a pedal pulse and ideally in both legs so that when we apply traction, we can apply the right traction to get the legs to align. If we are applying a traction splint for mid shaft of femur, we want to make sure there's no fractures or breaks in the lower limb, so distally to the fracture point, because we could cause more problems. With our traction splint, first of all, we are going to get out all the different components and place this onto our patient. We've got our different straps, We've got our um, hitch, our pole, and our thigh strap. So this one would normally be on bare skin. We're gonna open this up, and we're gonna make this green strap as long as possible, because just for this simulated environment, I'm using a boot. So we would just be coming underneath the ankle and securing that around the ankle area. Uh, remembering we may have someone applying manual a traction to this leg already because it's the manual traction which will work. I'm then pulling the green tag just to make this snug underneath their heel and then I'm going to make the yellow strap long and the red one short. I'm now going to put the thigh strap onto the patient and again we've already put a pelvic binder on just in case. We're going to open up the thigh strap using the natural hollows of the knee, thread the strap around, and we don't need to do this one tight, but what we want is this bar um, up as high as we can, so that's going to be a bit too long, so we're going to take out some of the strap there, and as you can see, it's round about above the greater trochanter on that pelvic area, and it's not going to ride any further up. I would normally work on the same side, but for the um, video, I'm going to stay working on this side so you can see what I'm doing. We put the pole together, the dart end goes below the foot. So we want the whole of that section below the foot, and then this bar comes up. And as we can see, it's going to be too long, but by bending that over, that will fit into there, and that will support. Down at this end, the uh, dart goes through the yellow little loop down here, um, and we can just take out just a little bit of the slack. And the last bit we're going to do is place this around the knee area. So getting our Velcro underneath, remembering our patient might be in a lot of pain, but this traction will be helping. We're now set up. I'm going to come all the way down to the bottom, and I'm going to place my knee onto that dart there. Can you see where I've got it? And that just takes the traction. So again, you may have already had someone applying manual traction to that femur. I'm then going to pull the red tag and take that traction. So that's as far as it will go. I'm now happy that the legs are in alignment and I've got the right amount of traction. The manual traction can now be released as this device has taken over. I'm now going to use the red strap to go above the fracture site. So again, using the natural hollows of the knee coming over the bar, so this would be above the fracture site. If this one needs to, I'm going to move this up to below the fracture site. So we've got the mid shaft of femur fracture in between the two supports. And the last one would be down the bottom towards the ankle hitch. So it's just supporting in place. Now that we've done everything, 
Again, we would recheck pedal pulses in both feet before we scoop the patient, maybe place him into a vacuum mattress for evacuation and urgent um, critical time patient going into the ED department.